Hey there and welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thanks for stopping by. I'm Robbie Greer from Rusticated Art. In today's video demonstration, I'm going to show you how I go about inking an old, uh, it's an old latch and a rusty old chain on a door. I'm going to show you how to create that wood, that wood grainy, you know, wood grainy effect that you get um, using a pen. And also there's a bit of, I leave graphite in there as well. But anyway, I'll explain all that as we go. Now, if you haven't done a lot of uh, art or drawing, I suggest that you go back to my channel, my YouTube channels, one through to six or six or seven. They are they're really, I've designed them really for the absolute beginner or people that haven't done a lot. So, yeah, I've designed them with you in mind. So feel free to check them out. That's what they're there for. So anyway, what do you reckon? Ready to get started? Come on then. Let's go. Okay, so I use uh, a number of um, uh, fine line pens and I've got a, whether you can see, I'm not sure you'll be able to see that, but uh, it's a 0 0.05, that's my finest, the finest one I have. And I go through to uh, 0.8, which I use for, like, for doing the larger areas, obviously. Now I find that when I'm drawing, or going over one of my uh, graphite drawings, I, I try to do the same sort of thing as I'm doing when I'm actually doing <coughs> excuse me, um, my, draft, uh, my graphite drawing, my pencil drawing. So I like to just go around and do the outlines and, and then just go in um, and just slowly work away. It's the same sort of thing. We're just going to be building up layers. Now I usually I leave quite a lot of graphite on the page because I, I find that with the, with the ink and the graphite it leaves uh, what I like to call uh, a platinum finish and really the graphite all it, all it does is just it just sort of um, highlights or, or uh, the contrast of it just makes it sort of stand out a lot better We still, I still use the eraser and I rub bits out here and there. I, do, I don't do a lot of shading, um, but you can, but you just go very, very lightly. It's just gently touching. Another thing I like to do also is I'll um, I put the date, I don't know if you can see, but I put the date of when I purchased them because I very rarely throw them out because I find that you can actually use them even when they're quite worn down. The nibs on them, you look at them, some of them are really thin and are really short, but there seems to be a little bit in there. And as I say, it's very rarely that I'll throw them out. I find I can use them for different processes. And the ink just makes it sort of stand out a bit more. I personally use um, the Unipin Fine Line. Um, Price-wise, it's sort of, well, I, one of the cheaper ones, but it does the job for me. Some of the more expensive ones that I've tried, um, they tend to they tend to bleed into the paper. Not all of them, no, you know, the real good ones don't, but the ones that you pay a bit extra for, that's my own experience anyway. So we're just sort of, just finding pieces of grain net that we've drawn in. So you can see how already that's made it stand out a bit better. And it can get a bit more detail because what you find, what I find, you know, with the, um, when you're doing graphite, 
And once you start blending and that, yeah, you know, like you get a nice, nice um, texture. But it does tend to sort of blur it all in. So you've got to keep taking stuff out, you know, taking the graphite out. And you're going over all the time to build up the layers. And that's great. But I just find that when you ink it, it's, it just sort of, it's not as soft. And once again, I'm not going to film the whole process. I'm just going to give you the idea of, of how to use it. Now, for example, I'm going to use my number 8 here just to fill in this gap between the two boards. You can use a brush. There's a brush uh, pen as well that can be used for the, for the bigger stuff like this. I think, I know Faber-Castell will make one. And I like to use, still use my reference photo just to get, oh, get around the right way. You know, we're still trying to create the same the same image. And you can take bits out and I like to move things around a bit as well, like I do with the graphite. I do virtually the same process. I don't want it to be like dark dark in here. I, I, um, I obviously want it dark, but not dark dark. And here, because it's, it's sort of a, it's not black as in it's been painted black. It's it's dark because there's no light getting in there. So it's sort of a different kind of darkness. Or a different tone. I'm just really going lightly. You know, this drawing started from a grid. It's a grid drawing. And I, um, I never, unless I'm actually doing um, a portrait or a commission that, you know, that has to be pretty close to the original, to the reference photo, I never try to do an exact identical photo image because I use the grid as a guideline. Yeah, of course I want to get it close, but it's not that's not the issue. It's not you know, it's not the desired result. It's not to try and recreate the perfect well, as a photo perfect, but what I mean is an identical image. I'm not trying to do that. And especially with when we're using um Painting a, a drawing in, in, in grayscale. Yeah, I'm still just going in there using my mechanical pencil. It's, it's an HB, but it just seems to give a bit more. Makes it a little darker for some reason. I think it's because it's such a fine point. Because this is only a, um, a 0 0.5 lead, so it's quite a thin lead. And see how I go in here and and um, just change the, the tone in here. Now I'm using a cool grey colouring in pencils, a Faber Castell, and I'm finding you can get quite a nice effect um, by using them. And the other thing I'm using also is a micro brush very very small but it's good for getting in these little wee bits so you just where well you want a bit more detail for example here where we've got um, I don't know what's caused this but you, you see it quite often in timber where it's been burnt or don't know what it is but anyway it's, it's you know that's where the platinum look sort of comes in so I go in here and 
push some of that graphite in there but we want it light and it's, 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 it's light and dark so we've got at least two maybe three tones you know mid light and dark now let's go up here a bit too so we're just going to focus on this area and just different areas at a time that I'll film and then I'm, I'm going to speed things up a bit as well but you'll get the idea even if I just put in that there and then we're going to use our little bit of blue tack here Sque squeeze it into a little bit of a shape there and see you just take bits out that it's amazing what just just doing that will do for the effect of it and all and then I'm gonna come in with me Kohinoor pencil eraser just, just a little bit don't want to do too much and, and you can see in, in the in the green you know there's white streaks coming through so we're just going to put those in too just it's just a hint too much so you need now like I said it's a process so we'll be coming back to all that we're gonna be just moving backwards and forwards I'm gonna go back in with with my cool grey I like to sort of go in a bit of a circular motion as opposed to going up and down a little bit of a blend and I'm going to use my uh, 2B mechanical here just put in a few darker bits it's like there's some little ridges going on in here. And of course, um, observation, that's really that, well, I get it's a rule. Rule number three is observation. Um, the more time you spend observing, you know, either your reference photo or the image that you want to draw, um, really flat. dark and the light in here now I've got a um, and then rule number two is patience you've got to have patience you know everything takes time and, and, and uh, take the time because that time is going to pass anyway. So just take the time. And if you've been following along on my, tut on my tutorials or my demonstrations, you'll find that I talk constantly about it's a process. And we're building layers, you know, to create the dimension or, or you know, to create the image that we're, we're trying to create. We have to do it in layers. And that all takes time. But, like we say, that's the time's going to pass anyway. Just these little things, they, they do make a difference. Sometimes you don't notice that either, until, and not until you sort of walk away and come back, and you'll notice little things that you never sort of notice, not, you know, subconsciously. You, uh, Something sort of happens. And of course, um, observation, that's really that, well, I get it's a rule. Rule number three is observation. Um, the more time you spend observing, you know, either your reference photo or the image that you want to draw, um, the more information you're giving your brain. And you don't realize 
consciously you don't sort of think you're just looking at it but your brain's taking it all in it's an amazing I don't know if it's a machine but it's an amazing something because it, that's how it all works I don't know how many times but I've been drawing away and, and you just sort of get so caught up in what you're doing you, you forget what you're actually doing it's not until you stop have a break that you sort of realise it's your hands and your and your eyes and your mind have sort of they've got it sussed. They know what it is, even when you don't. <laughs> and, that, and that's seriously that's how it seems to work. Well, that's how it seems to work with me. One of the things that I love about drawing in, in grayscale, don't get me wrong, I love colour. I know I've said it before, but uh, I find that when you look at a, a beautiful photo or painting and you see the colours, and already your mind knows it's a beautiful sunny day and there's a couple of clouds rolling over and the trees are nice and green. Lovely. But what I, what I like about a grayscale, when you see it, you, you, your mind's sort of got to work it out. You've got to think, oh yes, what's going on here? Now I've had to do a little bit offline because otherwise it would it would just take too long. So you know I've done the darks and I've just done a little bit of um, the grain work and that and the, worked a little bit on the chain. Anyway, I just thought we'd we'd better we, we have to do it because otherwise, as I say, it just take too long for this demonstration. I'm just going to do a couple of little bits um, and then we're going to have to go into time lapse again. I've got to say, it just, you know, it just takes too long. And, yeah, different if it was, uh, if we were doing like a proper lesson, like in my classes. But it's really just a demonstration to show you what we can do. And you can follow along, I mean, you just got to pause. These old rusty old nails, or I say they were, they must have been nails, yeah. Hammered in. Just using my cool grey again. I really like this, this pencil, it's, it just gives it a different different sort of um, a different feel a different, a different look you know it's well it's a different shade isn't it so that would do it now getting back to the the six rules of drawing <laughs> um, of course we've gone through that you know the, the main thing is there really aren't any rules but you've got to have patience, you've got to have observation, you've got to, you know, view your reference photo. But the other thing too is um, you've got to practice. And you practice on your good habits, not the bad ones. You know, you've got to be aware of what you're doing wrong. And you cut those habits out. So practice is, is hugely important, but not if you're practicing the wrong things. Just, you know, you can have a look at, have a look at what other people are doing, you know, and try and get the same sort of style that you're interested in doing. And, um, and just see how they do it and how they go about it. I know when I, when I started, uh, there was no, there was no internet where I lived. Well, it wasn't worth, you know, it was just too painful. So, I, um, just go to the library and get books and but then again also where I live I was too far away from um, the library I was living out in a rural area and they said I was too far away to be able to join the library 
So, you know, I used to have to go and sit in the library and I'd get out books and just sit there and study them and get some ideas. And also, I'd get to go around all the markets and on the weekends and it's amazing what you could find. You used to find all these old art books and And the other thing too, you know, practice and, is you've got to ask the right questions. You know, when you're looking at something, um, instead of saying, oh, I can't do this or I can't do that, ask your brain. Ask your brain how to do it. You know, whatever it is you're stuck on, because once you sleep on it, I don't know, it works for me anyway. You sleep on it, you're just sort of not too sure what to do. And not, not just with art either, it applies to other things, I think. Well, it does. Um, and you sleep on it, and the next morning, it's, it's, it's something other way, but quite often it becomes clear as. It's like, don't sweat the small stuff. You'll work it out. Somehow, one way or another. All the answers are in there. The biggest thing with me with my art when I was learning to, you know, all right, trying to, I'm always trying to learn new methods and techniques of doing things. But um, I found the biggest thing was, um, well, patience, just slowing down, taking your time. You know, I um, I know when I was doing commission work, well, I still do commission work, but uh, my my sort of mindset was. It was taking me too long, you know, like, because I like to get the detail, especially with foliage and, and, um, and I was trying to think of ways to do it faster. But really, that wasn't the answer. And now, of course, I, I, I really enjoy just the, the, the time that it does take. Without feeling rushed. I think once I sort of started taking my cl uh, my classes that, that sort of made me realize that everyone learns at a different pace and I tell my students you know you, we're not in a race it's not a competition don't try and do yours like my one because mine will be different from yours and it'll be different from the person sitting next to you it's your own little piece of work don't try and be like someone else but you can you get ideas from other people and of course, one of the other things, one of the main things is taking regular breaks. I don't know how many times I've found myself sitting and then you look at the time and, and wow, three hours have gone past. So you just, do, you know, that's not good. Movement is medicine. So you've got to get up and move. And I always set my timer no longer than 40 minutes and the same in the classes. Just got to get up and just move around a bit. I just finished doing a workshop and what I like people to do, you know, after 40 minutes, everyone gets up and have a walk around and then have a wander around. Just see what other people are doing, you know, not to try and copy or, but you do get other ideas. That's what art's about. That's about sharing. You know, have a drink, have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, whatever your poison is, or your drink is. <laughs> it's amazing what things look like with fresh eyes and another thing too quite often what I do is if I'm not too sure about how to draw something like a chain or trying to get the twist in that you know in, in the, in the uh, right eye in there you know I'll, I'll draw something off on a bit of paper sometimes if I put animals or you know people into my um, sketch or something like that you know I'll, I'll I'll just do that you know and just have a practice yeah yep and then, then away we go don't expect to get it right every time but you know, the chain, for example, I'll do a chain 
saw that on YouTube somewhere, but, but it just makes sense. I, I did a commission and um, there was some stockyards, and on the stockyards was a, was a chain, like a big chain. So away I went trying to do it, but um, well, I, I got lost. Then I saw some guy explaining how to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, but um, yeah, so, so you just practice things, you know, look it up, have a go at it. So you're sort of getting the idea here, and what I do. Just a little bit of scale, um, gradient, just flicking it up a bit, and it just, just little bits, just here and here, don't overdo it, you just put it, and you, know, and you create a different, a different sort of a texture. You know, we take bits out, I'm just going to take a little bit out over here, well actually I might just use my, my um, blue tack. Just take that little bit out. I think it's a little, it's not that it's too dark, it's just a little bit too soft, so it's smudgy. I'm going to come in here now. It's quite dark in this area here. I don't want to go that dark. That's the beauty of, of um, I find anyway, of, of using the grid for one. But it's an artistic license. You know, the photo that you're drawing, the reference photo that you're using, doesn't always, have, doesn't, it's not always exactly what you want to do. You know, it's, some, and quite often I've come across where it's just too dark or, and you can't see really what's going on. So I think it's fine if it's just a drawing that you're doing for yourself or for anything actually, but um, just to go in and add bits, you know. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with that. Well, I don't think there is. You're not trying to do the exact... You're using this as a guide. So... If it's too dark in one area, make it lighter. It's your picture, it's your drawing. Never mind. And also, quite often, if I am doing a portrait, and I, you know, for a commission, and the sort of photos that some that people send me, you know, and I say, look, I can only draw what I see, so I need a good photo. I don't want to see shadows, especially hair. If you can't see the hair at all. You know, it's just a brown or dark image on top of the head. You know, you just, you got no idea. You don't know what style it is. Oh, it's not my hairstyle. Well, let's... So, I always try to tell people, well, I don't try to, I do tell people, if they want a commission, it's got to be a good photo. But for, you know, but for pieces like this, well, it doesn't matter. You know, it's not going to resemble someone. It's just a piece of wood with a... <laughs> A rustic old latch on it, but we want to make it look as, as, as close as we can to the reference, otherwise there's no point in having a reference. Well, I think we're just about ready to go back into time lapse now, just to speed things up a bit. You sort of get the idea. So I'll have to be quiet now. <laughs> We'll see you at the end. Just going to put in some, um, just doing the finishing touches now, and so I've, to make it look, you know, like it's pitted and um, rusty and that, the effect we're trying to create, 
um, to, to create it we have to take a bit out to give us this pitted look so I'm making the dark bits a bit bigger otherwise it just looks like little dots all over the place and it's, it's not what we're really trying to it's not the impression we're trying to create so I've gone and I've just put a little bit a little bit darker and then I'm going to come in with my um, electric eraser take a bit off there and we're just going to take a little bit out just to so it gives it more of a, a pitted look yeah that's better and then I'm going to just blend it a little bit yeah I'm happy with that effect that, that's that's the effect I was after zoom that in a bit just see if you can see that because it's um, see what we're trying to do oh go that way so it gives it that pitted look yeah, so that's what that's what I'm going to try and do. And I'm just going to see if we can recreate it. Um, just over here, I'll just try little bits, you know. And if it doesn't work, well, doesn't work. We have to think of something else. <laughs> Clearing away the crumb on that. Yeah, that, that's, that's not a bad effect actually, that's quite neat that. Yeah, I think we just sort of do need to use that though, the um, electric eraser. We're doing the same as what we normally do, we're just building it, you know, building it up. Yeah. So I'm going to actually do that. Just not going to do all of it, but I'm going to just put a bit... In different, um, just in different places, because it's not. Well, it is pretty pitted actually all, all the way, but I don't want to do all of it. Anyway, we'll just see how it looks. Well, we might end up. <laughs> I might end up doing all of it. I'm going to just try and just do some squiggles and see what that looks like. To be honest, I haven't tried this before, not, not with the ink anyway. No, it's pretty, pretty, it's probably pretty obvious, but hey, that's the challenge. I love a challenge. I'm going to do a bit over here. It's not so bad down here, it just seems to be more up here. Yeah. I think it's going to work out real pretty neat. Let's try and just blend a little bit. Are we sort of getting the effect we're after? What about if we try with a darker pencil? Um, I'm going to try going in with and look, just. Yeah, and then coming in with my uh, HB, well it's a 2B mechanical pencil and then I'll take a bit more out. We need a bit more detail around this here. So now I've gone in with my cool grey. It's a bit tricky because you've got different, it's not just the um, tone, it's actually different um, colours. It's rusty in there. Well, we know we can't do that, but that's alright. And still make it look good. You know. Take a bit more out.
Yeah, I like that. I like that effect. So we haven't got really a lot more to do, you know. There's not much more, but I'm pretty happy with where we're at. I'm just going to just put a few more darks in, but really and you look at them and you think it does, it's sort of the grain's going this way but this here is going the opposite I mean it just, that's how it works it's just you know you can't sometimes there's no rhyme or reason or explanation it's just you know it's just how it, it's how it is so there's no right or wrong. And I just want to do a little bit more in there. Um, I've noticed, you know, there's a little bit more texture in here, but... Um, As far as there's more, there's a bit more darks and um, there's a bit more tone in here, a bit more contrast, just in here. Um, from here, when do I see? Oh, here. But you know, we're really just sort of nitpicking a bit now. I noticed there was that's oh that's dark. Okay, that's what I was looking at before. Um, so I'm gonna get my Remember, I didn't want it like it's so dark in here you can't you can't really see. Well, I don't want that on the drawing because I do I want to be able to see it all. I mean, otherwise, what was the point in drawing it? You know, yeah, that's the way I think anyway. I mean, and here. For some reason I have I missed that bit there. Or was that it in there? Maybe that's it there. We'll put it in there. Yeah. So we just put a few little things in there that's <laughs> that I missed. <laughs> not that I've missed a few, I've missed a lot, but hey. Never mind. I'm not too worried about it. It's all an illusion. It's all it is. We're creating an image. That looks like an old rustic latch, an old rusty chain on an old wooden door. Yeah. And yeah, we could play I could play around with this for hours. You know, and in fact the more I look at it the more I want to do, but realistically, for all, for all intent and purpose, that's about as far as we really can go. Um just around um, around this area here and then I think that'll just about do it oh and of course just here I don't want that too dark like I said but we will go in and just put a little bit in there just go over it because I like that effect where it sort of fades you know it fades away so I'm just going to go and just it's like just an, an overlay, I suppose, in that area. So we can still see it quite clearly, but it, and it's not as dark as there. Yeah. I think it's just trying to create that extra contrast. And like I say, you know, I could spend you know, a couple more hours at least on this. And that's what I love about it, you just see things and oh, and maybe that's what you're going to do. 
But I am going to Yep, I think that'll do it. Might just take a little bit more out. Just to give it a bit of contrast. So just by taking that out you just you see those little little ruts in there well they're not ruts but the the you know the, the the grooves in the timber I think it just comes from from age a bit out of here there we go oops Yep. That'll do me for now. All right. Well, put that down there. Up there. Just have to take that out a bit, I think. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Well, I'm glad you made it to the end. Now, I don't know what happened to the six rules of drawing. Somewhere along the way, rule one and two seem to must have found their way to the cutting room floor. But you know. But anyway, the, the first rule of, of drawing is there are no rules. And the second rule is patience. Everything takes time. So you've got to have patience and just take your time and work it out because that time will pass anyway. Now, if you're new to my channel, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. And if you ring the bell, you'll get notified every time a new uh, demonstration or tutorial comes out. Well, anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.